Hello, welcome back to Arc Nights. Um, I finally figured out what was wrong with the videos cutting up weird, so that shouldn't happen anymore. So today's video is gonna be simple. Uh, I think I'm just going to. Oh, I got this character, a five star. I'm Clifford, and I live to conquer the peaks. It's nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> well, would you look at that? I'm also getting to the end of this. Um, I'm going to just be reading the story part because I don't have a lot of time this episode. And I also was bullied by my siblings into mentioning that I made a Ko-Fi account or Kofi, Kofi, I don't know, K-O-F-I. <laughs> and uh, they said that I should say something about it. So if you want to support the channel, then you can go to my Ko-Fi account and then donate some money or tip I think it says on that app you don't have to obviously but if you want to then you can um other than that though let's actually get into what I want to do I got her I just bought her with credits and I got her just now I've never even seen this character before uh drags it oh shit that's helpful Let's get, oh right, because I'm level 20 now. Oh, 900 a random. The rest of the stuff are good too, but that's the main thing I'm focused on. <laughs> uh, a lot of LMD. Nice. And now the next one's 25. And I have 24 left, so I have a lot. Let's see who talks to me when I hit trust. Trust! Doctor, let me touch your head. Inspiration can strike, you know. Oh, come on. I've heard that one too many times now. Oh, let's go to the store, actually. Store? Uh, certificates. I can buy a bunch of Arundum right now. So let's do that. Okay. Let's, uh, buy this. Cool. Okay. A bunch of headhunting permits, so this video is gonna start with some summonings. Oh fuck! I just threw my fidget toy again. It's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Boom. Ally, <laughs> I salute you in oh, true snow realm fashion. My code name is Matterhorn, and I'm one of the. Nice. Okay, let's actually open them. Boom. <laughs> slogan is long live the penguin empire are you our client you can call me exusier i'm nothing like that lupo ice queen <laughs> i'm always down for some fun oh my gosh she has a gun <laughs> what oh my god that's a huge range Wow. Oh my god. Shoot three times in a row in the next attack. Wow. Well? Nice! Let's see if I can get Blaze too. Imagine. That would be insane. Okay. The name's Rope. Nice to Hi, meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, here's your ID card. Don't forget it. Okay. Come on, give me Blaze. What? Oh, come on, really? Another four star. Doctor. Okay. Boom. Last one. Come on. Blaze. 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 Oh, that would have been insane if I got both of them. I shouldn't skip. I have wants to so man, bad. Hunter, you won't regret giving me work. Okay. Well. Let's see what happens. Uh, I can't skip. I shouldn't skip. Okay, I'm 
There's a lot of characters in this game. Holy shit. Give me a stealth. I want a stealth. Okay. I had to go. Thank you. Indigo to Moshimas. I keep going to skip it, but I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. It's just a habit for some reason. Hello, I'm oh, I got Mer, a I'm Mer. an herbalist. Dr. Kaltzit gave me this title. One more. Haha! <laughs> okay. Let's Hello, get this I'm Mer, okay. an herbalist. Dr. Kaltzit gave me this title. She said Mer symbolizes the ephemerality of life and. Okay. Nice! I got a lot of new characters and Mer shards. Tokens. I have to max you out though. Let's not do that for now. Although. I will do that. I'm loving this feeling! Okay. Just four times in a row? Wow. And attack speed increase. And range increase. That's crazy. Like I said, not a lot of time in this video. So, I'm just gonna read this next story part. And then I guess I'm also gonna see how strong I need to be for the next mission. I'm back. Dot, dot. Lisburn, are you standing around? What are you standing around for? Nothing. Oh yeah? I remember now. Old Tyriel's daughter was cooking in the back kitchen, so you wanted some excuse to slip on over? Look at you acting like you're doing us a great service. She used to work as a chef in a nearby restaurant, so it makes plenty of sense to bring her on board. Whatever. More importantly, why is the food not ready yet? Hey boss, how come the food hasn't been served yet? Sorry about that. The main reason is we're a bit overloaded right now. Even though we've upped the kitchen staff, it's not enough to handle the workload. In that case, I don't mind lending a hand. There's no need. Who are you? I'm chief maid of the Saintus Char. Char? Char? Is it Jar? Jar Jar Binks. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> we're just a bunch of lowly soldiers. No need for so the formalities. Leah? Yes, madame. Split the accompanying serving servants into teams and have them take turns helping in the kitchen. Make sure the banquets proceed smoothly. Understood. But we couldn't possibly have you. There's no need to worry, sir. Though this banquet is hosted by the Lord Viscount, this land is still Cherig, and you are still all esteemed guests in the eyes of the Saintus. As the Lord Viscount was gracious enough to extend an invitation to the Saintus, it is only natural that we have servants lend our assistance as well. We servants look. Additionally, pardon me if this may sound offensive, but it would be out of place for those whose hands wield weapons to carry plates. Mm. Calm down, Lisburn. The maid's right. We'd probably end up breaking a whole bunch of <laughs> crockery if we tried to help. I know. But if there's any physical labor that needs doing, you just give us a holler, alright? Oh, come to think of it, the kitchen could use some extra hands to help them carry some groceries. I'm not sure if... I'm on my way! <laughs> oh, he's in love! Thanks, madam. My pleasure. Now that things are settled here, I won't further disturb your enjoyment of the banquet. I'm back. Leah, I have one more favor to ask you. Can you see if the kitchen has these items? If they do, I'd like them to make an additional dish. I like a fruit fruit and cheese wrap. <laughs> Pulling out the old, old home cooking. But the Saintist normally doesn't touch that stuff. Now, now, just listen to me. Carlin Trade's employees seem to be arriving one after another. That's right. The Viscount invited not only the Saintist and Master Encios, but also the elders of the Vine Bear Court, as well as the employees of the Car Carlin Trade. As extra extravagant as one would expect a Victorian saint. Victor 
Saint, Viscount, Victorian Viscount. The man's not all show either. He even invited Turiels, head chef of the Burden Peak Hotel. His foul temper isn't something that can be bought with money. It goes to show how well they've gotten on with our people during the month they've been in Cherig. Hmm? Uh-oh. Chug, chug. <gasps> chug, chug. Chug, <laughs> chug. My man just puked. Not bad, not bad. You mountain folks sure know how to hold your booze. We still can't outdrink me. <laughs> Who's up next? My man is plastered. Ugh, those men can get sloshed. Even in a place like this? Not to mention, quite a few have already ended up under the table. Char, what should we do? Well... Getting on well is certainly a wonderful thing, but getting on too well can be problematic. This sort of thing, however, ends up being a headache for certain other people. Gnosis, the Shagata, are in position. I have them patrolling the front and rear entrances to prevent... What the fuck? One second. Okay. Sorry about that. I got called by a random number, and as soon as I picked up the call, it hung up. <laughs> I have them patrolling the front and rear entrances to prevent anyone from sneaking inside the venue. No need to be nervous. Valet. Valets? Send one of the teams to help in the kitchen. Understood. Care for a drink? If you dare, that is. This is some crazy strong stuff. Are we seriously doing this? As I said, up to you. Haha, <laughs> you got me. You've got guts, I'll give you that. Cheers. Immediately out. Pour me another glass. On it. You're, you're not bad. <laughs> Do you have a hangover remedy? Leah? Right here. Good. Huh? D director, enjoy your nap. Uh, yeah, yes. That one soldier with the stomach of an iron. Oh, shit. I just dropped... I dropped it again. Bro, what is up with me? You managed to drink him under the table? Yep. That's crazy. Lay off the alcohol for the rest of the day. Go rest. Thank you very much. Color me surprised. I didn't expect Carlin Trey's CTO to be a, such a good drinker. I can hardly tell from your face that you just downed two bottles of strong liquor. Just some useless tricks I picked up when I was younger. Did you frequently attend such occasions with your in your youth? Don't worry about it. The banquet will start soon, and I'll have Carlin Trade's employees help move things along. You're not going to join in the conversation, Master Gnosis? Not at the moment. It's their time now. Okay. Weird. <laughs> oh, you, you too? Why are you such a tacky? Why are you so taciturn today, Sorencio? Is there something on your mind, or has the, coming to the banquet soured your mood? Your usual quips and retorts are nowhere to be heard today. I appreciate the Saintus's concern, but it's simply that sitting at the ta same table as the Saintus is a terrifying affair, and I can only hold my tongue in her presence. I see. I did not think Sir Encios was the pious type, but I stand corrected. I dare not speak out of line. Oh, there are things in the world that even Sir Ancios dares not to do. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> look how nice the weather is today. Perfect for the holding a banquet, wouldn't you say? Why don't you two go? Given the Saintus's high praise, there are naturally many things I am afraid of. I won't prattle on with the details, but take the ceremony of Cherigander's statue the day after tomorrow. For such an important occasion, all of Carlin Trade must be come together as one, without a single misstep. <laughs> that being the case, I would recommend you be thorough and circumspect as well, Sir Anciotes. The completion of Cherigander's statue is the, of the utmost importance to Cherig. 
Not to mention, we are in the presence of the Victorian guests who are eager to congratulate us. There is no such thing as too much caution. It is as you say. The Sanctus is very, very well, very well versed in all things divine, and the multitude of preparations made for the ceremony are impeccable and well thought out. In all respects, a true blessing upon Cherig. As for all other affairs, please rest assured that Carlin Trade will take care of the Vine Bear Court's concerns. Now then, it's certainly reassuring to see you two, <laughs> two of you so young and promising. This is hilarious. <laughs> Poor Harold. <sighs> As a reminder, we're not you. <laughs> this is hilarious. I can't believe they're just arguing in front of him. As a reminder, we're not here to celebrate, but as to discuss a collaboration. Seeing as how you're eloquent as ever, you seem to have no shortage of confidence. This is great. You've been quite busy making a name for yourself, Sir Enciodes. Though I rarely go down the mountain, news of Carl and Trade's exploits are regularly reaching my ears. But please do not forget this, Sir Enciodes. For thousands of years, Cherig has relied on hard work and prag pragmatism from generation to generation to develop our homeland into what it is today, not utilitarianism and reckless adventurism. Silver Ashes will never forget Cherigander's uh, ad admonition. Admonition? Weird, of our people, weird. However, the scientists must also understand that along with the people of Cherig's hard work and pragmatism, what is Otto doing? Oh. He was doing some weird stuff on Hannah's chair and then he just laid down to sleep. Is an indomitable adventuring spirit and desire to dis ascend the higher summits. Perhaps a little bit of the spirit is also what we need when it comes to dealing with external developments. I only hope that our, your enthusiasm does not lead to your head first into danger. Haha. <laughs> The young truly are so full of energy, but the Sanctus is correct. Sometimes stability is in fact necessary. I invited the two of you here because I wanted to... I am truly touched by the Sanctus's concern. Please rest assured that I will handle this matter and not betray your expectations. All things in Cherig must inevitably answer to Cherigander's will. Without sufficient faith, it is, is it not true that I would struggle to take even a single step? You're just as awful as you ever were. Ditto. Yeah, you too. If you if you have a disagreement, talk it through like adults. Don't go and ruin the peace. Let's move on and discuss our cooperation. Sir Enciodes, your brain is as hard and stubborn as the purest original originium ice crystal. The Saintist remains unmoving and speaks bluntly for the first time in a long while. I can't hold a candle to you in that regard. But it seems that even after all these years, our great Sir Enciodes still has not <laughs> learned to retain its capital. So what does the great Sanctus refer? Have you old ha have your old habits not flared up again? Taking on every bit of risk with no regard for the consequences? The greater the risk, the greater the reward. I hope you won't regret your choices later on down the road. Later on down the road. Nobody's going to sneak money under your pillow today. Indeed, that won't be happening again. No longer will I be woken by the jingling of coins, or to have to buy candies and snacks on margin, and pay back thrice the amount. I never asked you to pay me back. Please, you too. Just one moment, please, your lordship. <laughs> they say together. Oh. Fine, I suppose I'll drink to myself for now. That's hilarious. <laughs> Holy Saintus, Sir Enciodes, I have no intention of involving myself in your private matters or affairs. But if the Saintus has her own thoughts about Cherry's present situation, then reciprocating the Duke's offer may be the perfect option for you. What do you mean? Oh. Oh, I thought my mouse died. It just didn't click. Holy Saintus, might I tell you what I've been what I found most impressive about Cherig? Please do. Sorry. I recall the time I paid a medical call to a herdsman, Leonez was his name, a young beast in his herd had gotten lost while grazing. I offered to help him search for it, but he declined and told me not to worry. 
He had me wait until sundown left to have suffer, supper. And I so I waited. After finishing the treatment, I set up a cooking pot over the grass with him. We lit the pot and he found a good piece of cheese. You shouldn't you should have heard the sizzling sound it made when he threw it in. Sorry. Forgot to take my medicine this morning. I was sitting at to the to the side on a short bench, still thinking about the young beast when I heard a high pitched cry in the distance. Might be something you see all the time in Cherig, but for me, when I saw that young beast returning to the pasture at sunset, the way it found its way back to its mother's side, the two nuzzling against each other, what I felt at that moment was something I don't know how to describe. Old Leonas told me that burden beasts recognize the scent of their kin, especially falls, bulls, which are particularly sensitive to their mother's scent. Even if they get lost, I don't know what my mouse is doing right now. Why is it like glowing like this. Even if they get lost, they'll always find their way back following their mother's scent. That blood bond reminds me of the way that the people of Cherig view their land. It reminds me of the way Cherenciodes gave up Victoria in all her glory to return to Cherig. I see your lordship speaks very highly of Cherenciodes. It's true that he made many achievements thus far, but if you are comparing him to the young burden beast, returning to his homeland thanks to his ties with his mother by the name of Cherig, I found the joke quite droll. It is indeed thanks to Sir Enciode's longing for his homeland that House Castor decided to fund Carlin Trade. Moreover, the Duke believed that since Sir Enciode greatly treasured the Cherig blood flowing in his veins, he likewise would not come to despise the other half of his blood, the Castor bloodline. Holy Saintus, as I have previously stated, I am not here to stoke conflict, but at the inception of the Carlin trade, it was Castor who had extended a helping hand to Sir Enciodes. And now that Sir Enciodes has proven his worth, the Duke believes that this is time to collect a bit of interest. It appears that a few pieces of candy will no longer be sufficient, Sir Enciodes. It's not so complicated, really. What the Duke wants is simply a show of sincerity. Her Grace wishes to see this goodwill from Sir Enciodes, from Carlin Trade, and ultimately from Cherig itself. A show of sincerity towards the Duke of Castor and towards Victoria. So long as the sincerity exists, then our future cooperation will only become more intimate. And if we fail to express such sincerity... Harold puts down his tableware, then walks over to the window and opens it. The cold wind laced with the snow and ice instantly pours into the room. Even the burning stove is helpless to resist the chill. He quickly closes the window once more. <laughs> my apologies. The Saintess's question was so ins insistive, I found myself wanting to breathe a fresh air, breath of fresh air. After staying in this warm room for so long, I had forgotten how cold it was outside, you see. That being the case, your lordship could have simply entertained Serencios at this banquet. Why is my presence necessary? Well, you see, I've been eating and drinking remarkably well here. During my morning constitutional, my blood pressure has gone down even as my blood sugar was up a tad. I wouldn't mind staying here for another year or so. But you see, I find the Duke's incessant nagging quite bothersome. Nowadays, Carlin Trade became a pillar of Cherig, and the kinship between this great saintess and Sir Encios runs deep. I simply wanted to provide an opportunity for the two of you to sit down and talk things over. I'd like you to help me convince Sir Encios. I appreciate your lordship's candor. However, everything that has been that has a beginning must also have an end. It's true that Cherig uh, owes most of, much of its current standing to Carlin Trade, but if I, as a saintist, were to say that I know nothing of this, it would simply be avoiding responsibility. If you accept that I am the leader of the nation, then it must follow that I am also responsible for its con current condition. I cannot come up here and confidently proclaim that the ways of the past were wrong. Sir Enciodes always boasts about how he was one of the he was the one who chose Cherig's current path. However, to this day, everything in Cherig is the result of decisions that we have collectively made as a people, in which I am what one member. Sir Enciodes himself has no right to rebuke Cherig, as she is today. And the same is true for me. I see now. It seems I really ought to try more of Cherig's food while I st still have the appetite. Please come with me, both of you. Boom, boom, boom.
Once again, I must thank you for your hospitality today, my lord. Oh, my choice of dishes will suit you both, suit both of your tastes. They are traditional charred dishes that I specially requested Chef Teriel's prepare. Oh, there's no, okay, that was weird. I don't know why. This cheese wrap it looks positively splendid. Cheese wraps. And there are even fruit chunks inside. Truly, a traditional household dish. Dig in, my friends. Don't be shy. After you, Sir Enciotes. Very well, if you insist. That smell again. You still remember it? Of course. Gnosis should be here. Where is he? Sir, there are these Victorian soldiers earlier. Soldiers? That all makes sense now. It would be unbefitting of the Saintist to personally appear before Victorian soldiers, no? Do as you will. Don't worry about me. Now then, I shall not take up any more of your time, Holy Saintus. It really is that same smell. <sighs> At least a bit of s silver lining is the Trilby Asher. <clears throat> Sorry, one second. At least a bit of s silver lining is the Trilby Ashers can't accuse me of doing nothing. I've done what needed doing, and the ceremony is about to begin. I suppose it's time to head back. Oh, right. Can't forget to pick up souvenirs for the wife and daughter. And also... Ah! Second Wrecker! Jump scare! <laughs> Alas, it would be remiss of me to leave any regrets behind on this trip. Ah, there you are, Madam Dame Wrecker. Wretcher. I see you found yourself a lovely spot, clean and... Hey now, don't go. If you want an audience, go talk to Encios or Gnosis. I'll have nothing to do with your little games. Come now, that's no way to be talking. With all the delicious food and drink in front of you, would it really be kill you to exchange a few pleasantries? For example, shall we toast? Okay, nine dong. Oh, are you a woman who can't handle her drink? I'm much better at handling men who try to ply me to drink. Shall I prove it to you? <laughs> no, no need, I'll take your word for it. Oh right, Lily's in fine shape now, thanks to your timely handling of the matter. I've already managed for arranged for follow-up care, and her little ones are in good health as well. Leones, Leones, Leones said to leave one of them for you to name. I'm glad things worked out. And I'll pass on that last part. I don't have much of a naming sense. Aha! In that case, why not let me do it for you? Never fear, naming is a bit of a science in Victoria, and I happen to have a bit of expertise in the field. The little one is a girl, so my suggestion would be to name her Olivia Turnbottom Michelle Craigavon. I put together a la my last name, my wife's maiden name, and my grandmother's first name, making her <laughs> the same as my daughter's. I've changed my mind. Her name's Dolor. Dollar? Dolor? Dolor? <laughs> but, but I wasn't finished yet. Madam D Dragon Breath. Her name is Dolor. But Olivia. Dolor. <laughs> all right, all right. I said Dragon Breath because that's what Hannah says. Or, um, it's a fine name for a girl. Healthy and strong, right? How do you say that? I'm probably butchering that. Awful. Pronounce Dolor. Dowler? Dolor. Oh, no, I was right. Dolor. Okay. Even though I still think Olivia turned bottom, <laughs> Michelle Craigavon has a bit more charm to it. Nevertheless... I think Leonis was quite fine with the name, fitting as it is for a cherry girl. Madam Dragon Dra Degenbrecker. Degenbrecker. I also have another favor to ask you. Presumptuous as it may be, please take a look at this. I'm afraid I'll be leaving empty-handed on this business trip. I would at least live like to leave a little memento of myself as a personal note. As I said back at the station, I'm a huge fan of yours, see? Would you be willing to give me an autograph? You don't seem like the type to obsess over night sports. 
You think too highly of me. Vulgar man that I am, far be it from me to avoid vulgar pleasures. Pleasured. Though the arena is certainly different from the battlefield, the victors all have something that elevates them above the crowd. It certainly is a fine pastime. I hope that you take no offense to me saying that. Oh, what's up, Otto? Oh, he's inside the green screen. As none is intended. That much is true. You say that, but you still refuse to give of this poor man an autograph, even as he holds this car out. card out. I've treasured this trading card for a long time, you know. It was a limited release from the first time you won the Major. You never released another card. It's a darn shame that I can't seem to win your favor no matter what. That aside, when it comes to naming, there is something I've been curious about. And would appreciate if you could shed some light on the matter. Of course, you don't have to answer if you find it offensive. Dagenbrecker. Is that your real name? You're certainly brave to ask, Kragavon. I'm a man of few talents, but courage is something I do carry. What if it is? Just consider it scratching the itchy curiosity of your fans, madam. After all, every angle of your being has been under the spotlight since the first time you won the Major. The origins of the Black Knight and where her path, path ultimately led her. Countless eyes have been following you. Which brings me to my next question, Madam Dre Degenbrecker. Is your contract with Carlin Trade about to expire? I do wonder if you'd spare me the honor of inviting you to be a guest of Victoria. No doubt the Duke would be more than glad to welcome your arrival, and perhaps we'd even be able to discuss new horizons of cooperation. Uh-huh. Is that all you wanted to ask? That's all you're here for. I've hurt you out. Now, if you then leave me in peace, I've spent a decade in Cherig. I'm one of her people, and I plan to live out my days here. Good enough for you? Ah, yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I had my own speculation about the answer, but I must admit, it is quite moving to hear it from your own words. Why, you didn't even try to dress it up with more local flair. What? Why you didn't even try to dress up with more local flair. Weird, okay. True, I suppose you're dressed with a bit of color. Where'd you get that fur collar? Oh, this is a souvenir from a shop. Oh, this is from a souvenir shop that I'm rather partial to. It's quite warm. All right, all right. It's getting late and the banquet should be drawing to an end soon. So I won't pester you any longer. Though, I wasn't fortunate enough to win your signature. I do want to say one thing. I enjoyed your chat, our chat very much, madam. Madam. Please watch your step, Sir Enciodes. Is he drunk? Enciodes, I've brought the car. Thank you, Uncle. Are you returning to the mansion? Back to the office. Sir Enciodes, what he said. There are still some chores I need to take care of. Long time no see, Uncle Chester. Sanctus. Just call me by the name on the occasions, on these occasions. Enya, I... I'm so glad to see you safe and sound. Feeling is mutual. I'm relieved that you're in good health. Now then, I shall take my leave, Holy Saintus, Sir Enciodes. Very well, my lord. Yes, Holy Saintus? All else aside, I hope you have a wonderful time in Cherig. Where the fuck did it just go? Bro, I'm dumb as fuck, I swear. I can't find it! That's sad. Hi, Otto. <laughs> what are you looking at, dude? My chat is being weird. What are you doing? Where'd you go? Why are you running through the green screen, weirdo? All else aside, I hope that you find have a wonderful time in Cherry. You gonna come up and join me? Picking you up, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My buddy boy. Thank you for your kind words. Char? Yes, Sanctus? Please have the maids clean the mess. Oh, there's no need for that. The good soldiers not only helped clean everything up, but even took away the leftover food. They said that they were going to bring it to the infected soldiers who weren't able to attend the banquet. This viscount actually seems quite respectable. It seems that's obviously playing the villain. Stop it. Don't try to drink the coffee, dum-dum. You know better. Though I trust that something Interancios here can relate to. 
You flatter me, Saintus. It's getting dark. Be careful on your way back. You too. Aw, so they still care for each other a little. Saintus, did you need something else? In the name of Cherigonder, Cherig has arrived where she is despite, or today, despite the gulf between us. Second, let me make sure. <laughs> you barely see Otto, but cat. <laughs> hey, buddy. What's up? He's being needy right now. Okay. Let me try to do this with one hand now. What would Cherigonder think were she to look down upon her land today? Would she condemn us? Are you getting cold feet? Of course not. The miracle three years ago will forever be engraved in the hearts of all of Cherig. Even I must admit that Cherigonder indeed is the bedrock of this land. You're all but chil children playing top her body. If so, that question isn't for me to answer. Perhaps it's not her f for her to answer either. Dude, what are you doing? His tail is being creepy. <laughs> All right, we're back. He's headbutting the mic. I don't... Are you purring? He is. I can go the rest of the way myself. Oh, really? Dot, dot, dot. It was just a minor miscalculation. Hold on. I need a moment. Certainly. No, not at the main door. Head around the side. What's the problem? Right? Someone might see you? Someone might be working overtime. Who'd be working overtime at this hour? Me. And you too, probably. Are you complaining that I haven't given you enough time overtime pay? All right, Gnosis, sit down already. Nobody will see the drunken and indecent behavior of the CTO. If you ask me, you're holding your own image too high of standard. You're a lot more talkative after a few drinks, Sir Enciotes. If anything, you owe me <laughs> Degenbrecker more overtime pay. Oh, don't knock shit off the desk. He actually owes me a few lives. Too lazy to keep count. The two leaders of Carlin Trade squatting in the lobby of the company headquarters in the middle of the night to discuss unpaid wages. Gnosis is fighting on your behalf. Did the booze melt his brain? Okay, you're whipping me with your tail. Stop it. Aww. It's not like I sloshed for your sake. I got sloshed for your sake. What are you doing, creepy? He's so cute. Dagenbrecker looks over at NCOs, who only gives a shrug. What an embarrassment. Dagenbrecker hands the canteen of water she brought over to NCOs, and the latter naturally reaches out to accept it. The last decade has been countless such mem moments. Oh, This is also so cute. What the hell? It's weird seeing her be nice to someone, though. <laughs> Do you still remember Walden's? Who? The first time you had to carry me and Gnosis back? Oh, that banquet. Yes. Where Gnosis got where Gnosis got pissed drunk and you didn't, yet you were worse to, for wear because of it. Look at him now. His liver is clearly a lot tougher these days. At least he's not passing out all over the place. You sure this one's still conscious? Before you two start bad mouthing me to my face, <laughs> can you bring me some hangover remedy? The man slumped over the steps, does not lift his head, merely stretching his hand out towards the uh, ear spiller spirited friends. <laughs> raises, Dragon Wrecker raises her eyebrows and takes a pack of pills out of her pocket and places them in Gnosis' hand. She watches him up the blister pack with practiced motions and swallow the contents along with a big gulp of water. After a while, she lets out a sigh of relief. That's a bit better, but this doesn't seem to be the same medicine I took before. It's not a hangover cure. It's a poison I made. <laughs> and see how it's put me up to it. Yes, quite right. Is that so? Then why am I not dead yet? It doesn't seem like your poison's very effective. How dull. Are you too tired of this routine already? I thought it was pretty funny. It was more fun back when you actually believed it and tried to make yourself vomit. That's hilarious. That was a few years ago, but... That was a different pill, wasn't it? It didn't look like the previous one. Riley sent it. He often goes drinking with the Victorians and says this one works better. And so it seems that Dagon Brecker has become the most popular of us three among the people of Cherig. What? Why are you staring at me, dude? 
Notice the promotional pictures of the Black Knight hanging off the Bird and Beast billboards by the station? Hand drawn, too. Oh, he just pawed my arm! Come here, dude. If you want petting, then sit in the lap and just sit here so I can pet you. Is that a problem? Of course not. I've become increasingly busy in the recent years and have neglected many things. Once the situation calms a bit, Gnosis and I really need to start going out more often. That's for sure. If you don't show your face in public every once in a while, people will start to worry about your private life. One popular line of speculation is that you've thrown yourself into work as you become heartbroken over certain things. There are quite a few variations, too. Want me to give you a rundown? <laughs> <laughs> I pray you don't choke to death laughing and vomiting at the same time, Gnosis. If you could laugh like that all the time, our employees wouldn't be so afraid of you. <coughs> don't worry. Before I croak, I'll make sure to puke all over your shoes. So how did your discussion today go? Reaching any agreements? When it comes to matters concerning Cherig, there aren't actually that many differences between me and the Saintess. What about between you and the girl named Enya? The only problems we're talking about are those that can be resolved. If I had to do things over again, I'd make the same decisions every time. She'd never, and she'd still never feel good about it. We all know that deep down. Say what you will, but you'll never tell that to her face. You're not much different, Gnosis. You're two peas in a pod. Never saying what needs to be said, it's the people who need to hear it. Also, you should be playing dead right now. The lights of the office still shine bright in the night. The heating in the main hall is shut off and the silence spreads freely through the room, along with the cold. A moment later, the silence is broken by the sound of Gnosis retching. <laughs> Dang it, Wrecker. I need another pill. My head hurts. And a couple for me, too. I might be a bit tipsy. Both men stretch out their hands towards Titan Breaker at the same time. That unflappable attitude that someone there knows the truth makes Degan Breaker tingle in irritation for some reason. There are still many questions that cannot be answered, but at least here, right in this moment, there's no need to show off. No need for pre pretense. <laughs> They're slapping the shit out of them. Flaps their hands away. Huh? What? Uh, stand up. Go home already, if you're drunk. Don't squat here. There's a lot of work to be done tomorrow. Now go. Aww, that was sweet. And then I got an originite for that. Actually, it's not that big of a difference. Once I... I might actually be able to do this in the next episode. If I farm today, obviously. Which I'm going to do. Um. What time is it? Okay. I am out of time. Fuck. Yeah. I wish I could make today's video longer. I'm just out of time. There's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, if I want this video to go up on time, then I have to end it now. Um. Once again, I made the Ko-Fi account. If you feel like supporting the channel, then check it out uh as for this i'm having tons of fun it's fun learning the story behind all the different characters and for the fact that like if i go into which one is it this one if i start doing these there's so much story behind each character that i can just read through and i'm of course i'm going to eventually but there's so much that i'm i'm very excited to get to these and these, the inter intermise eyes, I'm really excited for these as well. So, if you like this video, like and subscribe. I'd love to have you around. Um, leave a comment on your opinions on the story. I'm really curious to see how people are enjoying the videos and the story itself. Um, I'm done using Skinogi, so you can stop commenting that. She felt awful to use, I know. It, she was really bad. <laughs> she dealt like no damage. Squat combat? I'm very familiar with that. She dealt like no damage it felt like constantly and I was very awful to use. The only reason I was using her for was like the extra healing that her like ability did and that was really it. 
I really need to sneeze right now. I feel it like building up right here. Um, but yeah, there's not really much else for me to say. So you better have a good night and bye-bye.